Well, hello, friends. It's Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Eichel traded to every team edition. I am doing. I do a show from three to five uh, Eastern um, every day, five days a week. Sorry, not every day, but five days a week, uh, Monday to Friday, and we talk hockey like crazy. And one thing that comes up a lot right now is Jack Eichel being traded and possibility of being traded. Well, with a lot of the things he's been saying and the negativity, and it doesn't sound like he's, at least doesn't sound like he's, you know, bullish to, to remain with the team. He's never come out and said, oh, I don't want to leave. I'm going to stick it out here at Buffalo or anything like that. Uh, in fact, quite the opposite. He's got an injury right now with his neck. Um, they're talking about whether he should have surgery or not, all of that sort of thing like that. From what I've heard, surgery or not, it won't affect his performance after the surgery is over. This deal would probably not work until next year, until he's healthy and the players that are acquiring him know that he's okay and all that sort of stuff like that. I did New Jersey, Detroit, LA, and Ottawa so far. You can check them out. Maybe I'll put the links down there in the comment section. You can check out those videos. Uh, that are two videos. I'm di I did two teams. Today I'm going to try three, and I'm going to get at, right at it quick. So if you could, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, so you can get all this fine frolic all the time. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace directly to your door, Perlocoptered by Hernandez and Melissa. If you don't know what that means, also comment in the comment section. Okay, talking about comments in the comment section, this is one of the ones. Now, the thing about this is, Doing this, I've heard a whole bunch of smack talk about Jack Eichel. Not he's he's uh, under he's overrated. He couldn't uh, solve Buffalo, so why would I bring him here? He's a cancer in the room. I've heard. You got any details on this cancer in the room stuff? I haven't heard anything like that. What I see is a young player who's getting tired of losing, and he's getting vocal about it. And who can blame him? And it wasn't just him. Reinhardt, too. Nobody says that about Reinhardt. Reinhardt's getting vocal about it now, too. Who looks like he's the nicest guy in the world. Jack Eichel looks a little bit of exasperated. And, of course, the whole thing going on with his neck. And he doesn't think the organization is doing a very good job of communicating with them. Really? Buffalo not doing a good job communicating and everything else? You don't say. It seems that that has been permeating in this organization for quite some time. I lean to the idea that this is just a guy who was unfortunate enough to get drafted by a really poor organization that needs to turn things around real quick and change things up about their philosophy. Okay, uh, we talked about uh, I talked we t I talked about it with the Ottawa Senators and they brought up a, you know they brought up really good points and I agree. There with what you're going to have to give up and uh, uh, one of the guys Gavin. Uh, commented on what you may give up based on like guys from the athletic great publication highly recommend you go check it out very smart very intel very great hockey minds awesome hockey minds they came up with this idea that it's going to cost you a prospect a b prospect probably another prospect after that uh, player off your roster and draft picks something of that nature i believe it was something like that you can check it out I think that was in my LA video that I did. Go, you can go check out the comment section there. Um, but he said, and I, don't, I won't go through all of it, but he said uh, 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 he doesn't think Ottawa would entertain those demands. And those demands were stuff like Stutzla being part of the deal. Uh, Norris, if not Stutzla, it'd be like Norris, Brandstrom, two firsts, uh, possibly Pinto, uh, all kinds of guys like that. A big pile. It's going to cost a lot of prospects if he's available. Eichel is a franchise player. I don't buy all this stuff. He he uh, he had put up huge points over a point a game up until this year. He last year, the last year before this year, I think he had seventy eight points in sixty seven games. As a twenty three year old, those are fantastic numbers. He was looking fantastic. This year was just an absolute disaster. And he was apparently injured as well. So uh, do that as you, 
Tell me in the comment section, what do you think? Maybe you have more reason to think she was a cancer in the room, something like that. Maybe you can put an article down there that shows something of that nature. Um, he, he says he would not entertain the demands. Eichel had Hall this year and Stahl and was no better. Um, Hall was with a lot of organizations and they weren't very good. Um, he goes to Boston and he's great. He's doing well. Now, you can look at it this two ways. You can say, okay, Eichel couldn't work with Hall, but he has way more veteran leadership to work with in Boston there. First time in Hall's career, he's had some veteran leadership around him. Eichel, except for O'Reilly, who rightfully said that there was a problem philosophically in the organization and then got traded, was really the only guy that was a veteran type leader in that he, Eichel hasn't had support around him for a long time. So I don't buy this. It was a disappointment. He had Eichel and uh, Hall in his, his hockey pool, which tells me you thought they were going to be good, right? So you got disappointed because this is Blake Eady. Thank you very much down there for commenting. I had a whole bunch of other ones on my Facebook post that talked about not wanting Eichel. He's a cancer and all that kind of stuff like that. Okay, let's go look at the uh, teams that we're going to look at for trading as of right uh, now. Now, what I did was I, okay, you can see that all right. What I did was I went from the bottom to the top. I'm going from the bottom to the top for teams with cap room. Uh, the, the ones I mentioned, New Jersey, LA, Detroit, Ottawa, now Carolina. Okay, I have a friend a guy that comes on my live stream uh, live stream from three to five. He is a huge Carolina fan, and we kind of entertain this idea. I mean, if Eichel's available, you have to at least entertain the possibility of getting a franchise player. What would it take for Carolina to do this? Now, I know they're going to really try hard to not have Ajo, and the first thing Buffalo is going to say is they want Ajo in the deal. So, Let's say, for instance, that they say, okay, you know what? Ajo is a great player. Is he a true franchise player? Not. Ah, he's, he's on the cusp, honestly. I really love the guy a lot. But I would say not so much. I, he's, um, he's a, he could be a Selkie Trophy candidate. It's close. It's close. I think if, you, if, I got, if I'm Buffalo and I can get Sebastian Ajo, I'm going to try to get as much as I can with him. But I don't think that um, Carolina is going to want to give up anything else off their roster right now. They are, I believe, cup contenders at the moment. So if you got Ajo, you got your next first round pick. You got a Selkie Trophy finalist for the next couple of years, puts up a point a game, uh, stuff like that. So you might be able to get like, Jesper Faust, or if you go down here, Brady Shea, who is has been solid defensively this year, uh, off their roster, something like that. Maybe Jake Bean. Maybe Jake Bean. So let's say we get Ajo, Jake Bean, and then you're probably going to have to give up uh, a good prospect. I'm not giving up Seth Jarvis, or, uh, Seth Jarvis in that deal. I'm already giving you Ajo. I would consider Noel Jun Gundler or Jack Drury and my first-round picks. That's what we're looking at. When, and you'll see what I mean if you go look at my other videos that I did. Maybe I'll put the link down in the comment section for those. You'll see what I mean that what their teams out there are going to could offer. This is a franchise player. You know, if if a team doesn't think he's a franchise player for some reason, he's not going to get them. But there are going to be teams out there that do think and they're going to give up a lot. So let's say they don't get Sebastian Ajo because they want the best one two one of the best one two punches up the middle in the league, which they would have if this deal happened. You give up Vincent Trocek, um Marty Nietzsche, who I love, 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 by the way. I think he's fantastic. Good second line could be your number uh, one right winger as well. Um, you're gonna give more off your roster here. Uh, Jake Bean and probably two really you're in that sense you're going to have to give up Seth Jarvis. 
Seth Jarvis put up, let's look at his numbers real quick. He put up uh, 27 points in 24 games. Oh, that's though, uh, you know, and, and that's actually not the best numbers in the Western Hockey League last year, uh, this year. But um, I'm sure he's going to put up more than that. Before that, he put up 98 and 58. Okay. He was in the Chicago Wolves. He put up 11 points in nine games. That's more like it. Seven goals in the AHL. So he might have been a little deflated to go back to junior. I'm sure he'd get it back going again there. He's an amazing player. 11 points in nine games as an 18-year-old in the AHL is fantastic. But that's the kind of deal you'd be looking at if you were Carolina. Tell me in the comment section if you're a Carolina fan what you think of that. Columbus. Now, we'll go to Columbus. Columbus has been talked about a lot. comes up all the time when we talk about this because they desperately need a center, of course, after losing Dubois. The problem is, is they're not going to have a center to give back. Now, it's possible that Buffalo doesn't need to give a center back. Um, make sure everybody can see this all right. It's possible that Buffalo doesn't need to give up a, a center back because they can actually put Sam Reinhart back up the middle, assuming Sam Reinhart will sign. And that's going to have a lot to do with what Buffalo does here. If they can get Sam Reinhart to sign, who has shown dissatisfaction with the organization himself, uh, and they don't have to trade him as well, then you have a number one center, and you could focus on wingers quite a bit. Casey Middlestat looked a lot better in the second half. We could bank that maybe he'll be a lot better. Dylan Cousins is still there. He, he put up 13 points in 41 games as a 20-year-old. I think he's better on the wing myself, but we'll see. Uh, you could also uh, toss in Ristolainen in this deal. He has talked about wanting out, so... Which direction are they going to go here? If they're looking towards a complete rebuild, which, God forbid, Buffalo Sabres fans, that's what they're doing because you've already taken enough abuse as it is, then I suppose Columbus would really be out of this completely, except for the fact there's only one thing. I think that Buffalo is going to try to get players for now, be competitive now, and do this retool like as fast as they possibly can. They have fans out there that pay good money to come see them. I, I just can't see them showing up to games for another rebuild after all the years that they've floundered as much as they have. So you could sign Patrick Laine. Now, the thing with signing Patrick Laine here, you don't want it to... Uh, uh, you don't want that to be... Uh, Sorry, somebody just messaged me. You don't want that to be a no movement clause, right? Uh, give him the money and have him as a piece that you can use to possibly do this deal. Patrick Laine uh, would be have to be part of the deal. I like to say Cam Atkinson, but he's 31 years old. I'm looking more at like Emil Benstrom, or not Benstrom, um, Oliver Bjorkstrand. So your two top wingers are in the deal. And that's not going to leave you with too much left over. Then, possibly, like, you can throw Zach Wierenski in there. If I'm doing the deal, I want Zach Wierenski all day, although defense is not necessarily what they're looking for. Um, maybe Merzlikens could be part of this deal. It's starting to look a little more favorable now. If And then they do have some prospects, but they're not really super strong in prospects. Which tells you that if they make a deal like this, um, they're going to have to go out and get free agents, fill out their roster, and they're doing, doing pretty much a burn-it-down rebuild with Jack Eichel as the centerpiece of that rebuild. The other thing they have, the one thing that they truly have that could pique the interest of the Buffalo Sabres is their next year's first-round pick. Because what... Columbus is one of the few teams that can get Jack Eichel and be just as bad next year because, as you see, the pieces that they would give up would leave them pretty much barren on their roster. And he, Jack Eichel would almost be in the same situation he was in Buffalo, except he'd have a genius general manager like Kekalainen who could turn this around very, very fast. But that first-round pick, you have Savoy and Wright next year who are 
beasts, man. Incredible centers. And you could be looking at getting another generational center really fairly quick in next year's draft if you do a deal like this. If you add that in, they probably don't have to give up quite as much. That's going to depend a lot on what Buffalo wants here. But what they could do, what Buffalo can do now is if we go down to Buffalo, like I know a lot of people are going to say what Lion A didn't play good in Columbus. He's still an X 40 goal scorer. In the right situation, he probably could still pot a lot. You could put Lion A with Eichel and Bjornstrand as your top. Uh, sorry, Eichel, sorry. Reinhardt and Bjornstrand as your top line. Serviceable. And then uh, Olafson will come down here. Casey Middlestat looked really good in the second half last this year. And so did T Tage Thompson. So you're building a bunch of depth. You've still got Dylan Cousins. You've still got Jack Quinn coming up. Um, it's not looking so terrible. But that being said, and then if you throw a Wierenski in here, uh, you put him on the top line, you got Rasmus Dahlin. The defense is starting to not look too bad. And uh, you can have some cap space to add free agents in free agency. You might be able to keep this ball rolling not too bad. You see what I'm saying? And still have that possible generational player next year and their first round draft pick this year who is power. I don't know. I think there's other teams that could probably give them a better deal like the one we're about to look at right now. New York Rangers, the first team that came up when Eichel, does Eichel trade started, stuff started coming up was the New York Rangers. And for good reason. Why? Because they have, uh, they've accumulated a lot of assets. It's, it's just something that they kind of would do. They have a lot of guys that they are going to have to sign, like Philip Heidel and stuff like that. Uh, as far as next year, they've got quite a bit of cap space. However, um, $23 million to work with. They can sign a couple players. They can certainly fit into $10 million for Eichel, which is a good deal, by the way. He would be coming in lower than Panarin on their own team at $10 million. And I think in the right situation, could you imagine Eichel and Panarin playing together, man? Whoo! So, what's the deal? You know, who, you know who you're looking at right off the top, right? Let's look at their depth chart. What's the deal? Mika Zabonijad right off the top, right? Mika Zabonijad is... For, he's he's 28 years old. He's old. I don't know if Buffalo is even going to want a 28 year old in this deal, but he's still got a lot of legs left. And if they're looking to do a a now and later type deal, it may be okay. So Mika Zibanejad is Eichel better than Mika Zibanejad? Yes. You think that Mika Zibanejad plays well with Panarin? Throw Eichel in there with Panarin. Um, and you've got yourself an amazing top two pairing in the league. One of the best top two pairings in the league. So you got, we're going to go with Zabonijad. Um, now if you go with Zabonijad, are you going to have, you could give try Kako. I heard that a lot. Depends on what you think Kako is going to be in the long run. I think he's going to be really, really good. Uh, he's going to a big, he's already, he put 17 points up in 20 games last year. I've heard people calling him crapo 17 points in 20 games on a, on a young team. There's nothing wrong with that, man. He's growing. He's getting bigger. He's solid. He's perfect for the playoffs. He's, he's an excellent player. So let's go Zabonijad, Kako, uh, uh, I would, I would not trade Fox by the way. Fox is a Norris Trophy candidate next year. It would have to be a one-for-one. One. And defensemen like Fox just don't pop up every day. I would even go as far as you could almost consider him generational. I, I just think he's there's too much value to him on that defense for you to trade him. He would be off the table in the deal. Um, maybe Libor Hijek. And then, of course, they have some fantastic uh, prospects um in uh oh uh, what where's their defense prospects do they have them in the AHL anyways uh Robertson Schneider 
Fraden Schneider, there he is, they have him here. Fraden Schneider or Matthew Robertson. One of those two. Fraden Schneider put up a point a game in juniors this year. I didn't expect that. He's putting more offense up than I thought. Matthew Robinson, big boy, playing fantastic in junior. Looks like he's going to be, whoops, I guess I have no internet connection. Go like this. Okay, we got it back. Sorry about that. Uh, I was about to look at Robertson. Matthew Robertson. Love this guy. He was drafted in the second round, 2019. Uh, Edmonton Oil Kings, 22 points. Had 47 points the next year before that. That's the kind of package you're looking at and maybe even, and then of course they have next year's first. Now next year's first, if they've got Eichel on their team, I don't think that first is going to be the greatest first in the world. So all of those things combined, my question is New York Rangers fans, is this even a consideration for you? Most of the people I'm hearing, especially on rebuilding teams like this are saying they don't want to give up that much for Eichel. They think that uh, they're, they have too many questions about why he hasn't worked out in Buffalo um, and all of that. I personally, if it's me, I'm strongly considering this deal. Strongly considering it. But I will admit it's not a slam dunk. It's not a slam dunk for me because um, it's hard to give up all that after you've built up your team and stuff like that. And coming from a fan base, a fan base especially, they've grown in endearment to these players. And, um, you know, you get to know them a little bit. You see them on the ice. You see them as a team. And it's hard to break up your team like this. And I imagine I'm going to get some backlash from Rangers fans because they have watched this team build. And it just, the sounds of giving rid of these players that you work so hard to see, to grow, to, grow, to bring up and build a team, doesn't sit well, and I understand that. But tell me what you think. What do you guys think about these deals? I got to get going here. Holy smokes, 22 minutes. Hopefully you have 22 minutes. I got to get ready for my live today. Uh, oh, this is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. 8,500 hits in the last 20 days on that website. It just got rolling not too long ago. Fantastic website. Go check it out. Have a great day. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.